and a wonderful, beautiful day to all of you out there. I'm here in amazing Sedona, Arizona, and we are doing the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and I wanted to give you the backdrop of this amazing heaven on earth space that I'm lucky enough to find myself in today. So today we're doing lesson 35, and this is gonna be a great deep dive inside once again, so here we go. My mind is part of God's. I am very holy. Today's idea does not describe the way you see yourself now. It does, however, describe what vision will show you. It is difficult for anyone who thinks he is in this world to believe this of himself. Yet the reason he thinks he is in this world is because he does not believe it. You will believe that you are part of where you think you are. That is because you surround yourself with the environment you want. Ah, and you want it to protect the image of yourself that you have made. The image is part of this environment. What you see while you believe you are in it is seen through the eyes of this image. This is not vision. Images cannot see. The idea for today is, very diff is a very different view of yourself. By establishing your source, it establishes your identity and it describes you as you must really be in truth. We will use a somewhat different kind of application for today's idea because the emphasis for today is on the perceiver rather than on what he perceives. For each of the three five minute practice periods today, begin by repeating today's idea to yourself and then close your eyes and search your mind for the various kinds of descriptive terms in which you see yourself. Include all the ego-based attributes which you ascribe to yourself, positive or negative, desirable or undesirable, grandiose or debased. All of them are equally unreal <laughs> because you do not look upon yourself through the eyes of holiness. In the earlier part of the mind searching period, you will probably emphasize what you consider to be the more negative aspects of your perception of yourself. Toward the latter part of the exercise period, however, more self-inflating descriptive terms may well cross your mind. Try to recognize that the direction of your fantasies about yourself does not matter. Illusions have no direction in reality. They are merely not true. A suitable unselected list for applying the idea for today might be as follows. Now I wanted to just drop in my own little terms. So there's a whole big list here and I'm going to ad lib a little. I see myself as tranquil. I see myself as happy. I see myself as a leader. I see myself as uh, sometimes ungrounded. I see myself as directionless. I see myself as powerful. I see myself as afraid sometimes. I see myself as selfish. I see myself as unguided. Okay, that was just a little ad lib of mine. You put your own in there. Um, when I did it this morning, when I was still in bed reading the lesson, some other words came up and it really is all about you making yourself as vulnerable and as honest as possible. But it was interesting how I would go between words that seem like good words and words that seem like bad words. But it's just good to know that all of it is still lacking the vision of God in us. And we're seeing these things that are mere descriptions. And the point in the beginning of the lesson where it talks about you put yourself in the environment you want to be in, what was coming up for me was how I've created a life where uh, I'm not challenged very much and I'm not, um, you know, everything is just sort of going really nicely and I'm really taking advantage of the comfort of my life right now and the ease with which I live my life and, and move about the planet as I wish. 
And there are things that I could be challenging myself with and paths that could lead to uh, a little bit of friction, which I'm avoiding. So that was interesting to note that. All right, let's get back to the lesson. You should not think of these terms in an abstract way. They will occur to you as various situations, personalities, and events in which you figure cross your mind. Pick up any specific situation that occurs to you. Identify the descriptive term or terms you feel are applicable to your reactions to that situation and use them in applying today's idea. After you have named each one, add, but my mind is part of God's, I am very holy. During the longer exercise periods, there will probably be intervals in which nothing specific occurs to you. Do not strain to think up specific things to fill the interval, but merely relax and repeat today's idea slowly until something occurs to you. Although nothing that does occur should be omitted from the exercises, nothing should be dug out with effort. Neither force nor discrimination should be used. <clears throat> as often as possible during the day, pick up a specific attribute or attributes you are ascribing to yourself at the time and apply the idea for today to them, adding the idea in the form stated above to each of them. If nothing particular occurs to you, merely repeat the idea to yourself with eyes closed. So there you have a very interesting lesson today where we are basically told a statement that we may not believe. My mind is part of God's, I'm very holy. The first time that I read that, I started feeling a little bit of a twinge of like discomfort um, because there's a part of me that doesn't believe it. The ego is the separated part of us and it's always engaged and kind of looking for those opportunities to debate with what the course, what Jesus is trying to tell us. So I grabbed the Ken Wapnick notes for today's lesson and uh, there was a couple things I wanted to highlight, but I think I've kind of said enough with using my own examples and how I feel about myself. One thing I did want to read is he pulls out a quote from the Manual for Teachers on gentleness. And this, this is the kind of thing where we're going to be encountering feelings about ourselves that may seem a little overinflated or may be downright depressing to acknowledge. So as you go through this today, don't force yourself, but when these things come up and you're feeling like you're starting to maybe spiral out of control into a self-deprecating place, whether it's because of the good or bad stuff that comes into your mind, remember this, God's teachers are wholly gentle. They need the strength of gentleness, for it is in this that the function of salvation becomes easy. Who would choose the weakness that must come from harm in place of the unfailing, all-encompassing, and limitless strength of gentleness? The might of God's teachers lies in their gentleness. So remember that as you go into this lesson today, or if you go after it again, because maybe you've already done a couple iterations of your exercises. Gentleness. Gentleness with yourself. Gentleness with the world around you. Gentleness always. That's our strength. Lots of love to you. Thanks for joining me out here in amazing, beautiful Sedona. And I'll be back again with more tomorrow. Have a good day.